Hey folks, it's Ben. We're here with the awesome production of the Brother Boutique 751 sewing machine. Uh, in this video, we hope to cover some maintenance, how to wind a bobbin, how to thread the machine, and up some basic running and how the, what the knobs do. Uh, and this should be our final video on this brother, unless there are any other questions. Now for maintenance on this machine, it's fairly simple. Uh, what I'm planning on using, and I'll probably get flack for this, but I use uh, a three-in-one oil. Uh, but it's engineered for electric motors and the reason for that is it's a s synthetic oil where uh, The regular three-in-one all-in-one whatever is actually a vegetable based kind of oil This one's completely synthetic, so it's not going to eventually bind up. It stays liquidy um, So in order to do any basic maintenance on this machine, uh, there's a couple things you have to do Obviously pop the lid open is one we need to take out two screws here and that's just about it for basic maintenance. So let's take the top off and look inside. With these two screws uh, removed, you can then lift this straight up and that shows us the top of the machine here. And there are gonna be lots of points to get to. We can start at the back and maintenance for sewing machines is often very common amongst most machines here. So our machine is not plugged, uh, it's actually plugged in, but um, primarily what we're looking for are holes. So here you see a hole for the main bearing uh, here we have a sliding shaft, a cam if you will. Um, so anything that moves requires oil. So this bushing would require oil that you see here. Uh, uh, obviously that cam that we talked about needs oil. As we come down the machine here, we've got some intri intricate gears going on and some of the needle moving requirements. So as this turns, the shaft goes one speed, but this whole assembly right here only goes not even half speed. So obviously that's running on bearings on that shaft, so it will need to be lubricated, including this right here, which actually is responsible for moving our needle left and right. So that needs to be lubricated. On the back end of it as well, we've got no more bear, uh, more bearings as well uh, there that will need to be lubricated, plus this little cam right here, which when we make adjustments, now it has an existing grease on there and that's fine. I would leave it. If you add an oil, it will help kind of keep that more liquidy and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, as we come up to more towards the front of the machine, <clears throat> we've got some more access holes. So as you can see, this is a pivot point. So that will need to get lubricated. And then we have this big kick out here. So there's a hole that you see right there to get lubricated. This whole shaft, there's a lubrication, there's actually a screw there and a lubrication point. I'd put oil right on that. There's a big bearing in there. Then as you come around to the front, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn the bulb off because that might help my camera exposure. Uh, anything that slides up and down. So if I rock this back and forth, you can see how obviously the needle, so this point here, the other point up top here, um, the shaft that connects it to the rotating parts, that's a good view right in there. Anything that moves requires a little bit of oil. So we've got all these components that need a little bit of oil, but don't forget, you have your feet that you can bring up and down. This shaft here, right there, that has two connection points. That will also need oil. So everything that moves will need a little bit of oil. If you do that, you can't go wrong. Anything that's explicitly not to be oiled won't be oilable by you. So you've got all the front end components, anything that moves in the back end, these primaries right here there should also be don't forget you've also got a main bearing in there i mean you can put some on the outside and then if there's a this one actually has an oil access hole right there underneath the bobbin spinner which fyi needs oil so that's it for the top end now let's go underneath so finally on the underside obviously you can just turn this and you can see what moves we've got our primary component here and that has an oil hole on it uh, we've got our pivoting rod right here. That's actually a drive for our bobbin. Um, so that needs oil, following it over here. Now underneath this, these three screws here, if you take this out, there's gonna be some heavy grease because we've got some fairly nice gears in here. Ours is full of grease. So we just took our finger and, and mushed it around a little bit just to make sure the grease stayed distributed, but we didn't actually need to add any oil to that component that you see there. Um, we've got lots of moving parts up here So as you see anything that rocks or pivots Just put a drop of oil on here. We have an oil hole here. We've got some pivot points here Also up here and over here 
uh, anything that moves, put oil on. So once you've got everything oiled, now you know you're going to be running your machine at least in a lubricated state. Once again, the type of oil you use will depend on uh, personal tastes and styles, uh, but now everything is at least safe for operation. So let's go ahead and wind a bobbin. So the first thing we'd like to do is wind a bobbin. So I'm going to take some, just have thread, any thread. And for bobbin winding, I actually come through this hook and around, and we come back over here to our little bobbin winding area here. And if you notice, this guy has a little hook on it, and that fits with the slot on our bobbin. So I should be able to just put my bobbin, if I get my fingers out of the way, you could see, down and it kind of engages right there. I'm going to take my string and just put it up through one of these little holes. <laughs> there we go. And then what I'm going to do is actually push the bobbin in. So now we actually have friction on the machine. If I turn the thing here, but notice this is going to move the whole assembly. So I'm going to, there's a clutch here that I can loosen. And if you follow the instructions here, how to release and tighten. So we're going to release this. So we're just back it off. So now that if I spin this, it only spins the bobbin. It doesn't spin anything else. The rest of the machine is idle. And I'm gonna make sure I don't get caught on my sticker. And I'm gonna put my foot down on the pedal some. And away we go. And just put her down. Get the clutch out, <clears throat> that's all that's spinning. And you can fill this bobbin up, it will reach a breaking point. But for this video, I'm gonna stop right here and we're good to go. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and go snip, move it away, and now I have a full bobbin. So here we have the bobbin down below. So there's a little lever we can pull from this way over and I'll show you when I take it out. I'm gonna come in, pull it out. It's this lever right here as <laughs> my bobbin runs across the floor. And that lets me take out, in this case, we have an existing bobbin in there, but here's our case. Great, so let's load up our not newly wound bobbin inside. So we have our bobbin here, so I'm actually gonna take the end. I don't even need to take the end, do I? I can just uh, find the slot where it fits, right there. See this little line right there? I can click it in and under, and I have to make sure that it's going to come out like this. Notice it's going to, it's pointing from noon over to nine o'clock. That's how I want it to be. And if I don't mess stuff up here, I can put this in and we are good to go. We have a video on how to check the tension, but long story short, we take it, we drop it down and it should fall about an inch. And we have about an inch, but it just fell out. So the tension's good. So I'm going to wind this back up and I'll show you how to put it back in the machine. So I've got my bobbin here, the tension's good. I'm gonna pull this lever out and that locks the bobbin in. That's handy. And then I'm gonna push it with this little lever on the top, inside, on the shaft, and then let it go. So now we've got it locked into the machine. And we're technically ready to now thread the top of the machine. And then we can bring them all together. So we'll close this for now. We don't have to, but let's thread the top end of this machine. So for this brother, we actually come down around the hook and around this little tensioner again. This is going so smooth for me. Perfect. We come down through our actual thread tensioner right here. And then we clip it around this little hook right here. There's actually a little spring inside it grips. So with that, we then come up again. And then from left to right, we go through the hole Okay, then we come back down, loop through this little hook here. Then on our little, our needle hold essentially, what holds our needle, there's actually another little strap to catch there. So now we're on that. And then from this side, and this is the part that gets me because I'm getting older now, I thread the needle from forward to back. Okay, just that easy. So everything's lined up, so I should be able to pull on this pretty good. But now we still need to catch the bobbin thread. 
Now that I've got it threaded through the needle, I'm going to bring it down underneath the foot, like so. Release it a little bit. And now I'm going to rotate it towards... Essentially, if you're looking at it from the end, you're going to be turning it anti-clockwise. You're going to be going this way. So the needle comes down. Nowhere, because I haven't engaged the clutch from the bobbin winding. Bring it down. It's not going to grab it this time. It is. Good. You just need to pull out this one. Pull them both out and back. And now our machine is now threaded to go. So now that we're threaded, let me show you some of the features of this machine uh, on some thread on some fabric we have. So to run our brother, it's pretty simple. We actually only have three adjustments to make. Here we've got our pattern adjustment for our needle. In this case, it's manual, which means uh, it's pretty much a straight um, or, but, zigzag. or zigzag uh, depending on where we move this lever. This actually determines that we go from zero zigzag uh, all the way over to a lot of zigzag, which in this case is five, but the numbers don't actually matter. Um, so right now it's set for a straight stitch. And then this one actually controls the speed of our feed dogs. So very small stitches or would be a one or in the fine zone. And then a four would be big stitches, something you were expecting to maybe pick out later or something along those lines. So for our test here, we'll do it at two and a half. We'll have it straight. We've got it set to manual. These other little buttons here are for like if you're going to do a, a button opening along those lines. Uh, this one is for an elastic stitch. And then this one's kind of another pattern that you could use for it. But we're going to keep it in manual now. I'm going to put my fabric in. I'm going to put my foot down. And then I'm going to find my pedal, which is wandered away from me. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay a couple stitches. Now, <clears throat> this machine does have a back stitch button. It's right here uh, on your stitch length. So what I'm going to do is a few stitches this way. Then I press the back stitch button a couple times and then I let go. And away we go. So in this regard, let me lift my foot here just to show you guys. We have a fairly simple straight stitch. Now what we're going to do is to kind of show you what it can do is I'm going to leave the stitch length. You guys know what stitch length are, but we're going to kick this over to like a three. And so what you're going to see now is a much different kind of stitch, but let me put the foot down. He can hear you know. <laughs> uh, and now you can see the needle goes left and right. So if you look at the pattern coming off the back of the foot, it's quite much more zigzag. And if I go all the way, uh, and you, this can technically be on the fly, you're gonna see a very large zigzag. And if I change my adjustment to very big, you can see how the feed dogs are just making this thing crazy. Big jumps left and right and forward and back. So that's the primary adjustments of what you'd be looking for on this brother machine. Uh, if you're having issues with um, the type of stitching on the back or on the front. Uh, once again, your lower bob intention. We've already showed you how to check that. And then you can make adjustments. This one's set for five right now. But uh, if you're getting some issues, start going either way. Try it at seven, try it at three. And if your problem starts to resolve, just keep going until you get it fixed out. But, um, so that's the tour of the Brother Boutique. Quick maintenance, quick how to do a bobbin, how to get it threaded, and how to sew with it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, we're very familiar with sewing machines and this machine is fairly generic in terms of what it can do. Um, it was made in Japan. It's one of those Japan machines. They're very high quality. They do a good job. Uh, subscribe to our channel, Red Barn Homestead, for more sewing machine videos and other machines uh, from vacuum cleaners and carpet cleaners, uh, other hobby stuff. I'm pretty sure we'll be gonna be doing some cricket stuff here eventually. Uh, cool stuff like that. And leave a comment, we'd appreciate it. So. If you uh, have any questions or comments, leave them and you guys have a good day.